Welcome back. I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. And today's video is going to be a little bit different as I'm not here to talk about a watch I've already bought, but more looking for advice on a watch that I want to buy. And that's all because I'm pretty much a newbie when it comes to the world of G-Shocks. As I mentioned in my last video, I've been thinking about survival type watches, and that's exactly the world that G-Shocks live in. And I've been wanting to get a G-Shock for quite some time now. But every time I start to look at which one I should get, I kind of stop as I get a bit intimidated by it. G-Shocks are sort of a world of their own, and it's kind of hard to pick where to start when you want to get into them. But recently I started looking at G-Shocks again, and a lot of that just has to do with the crazy state the world is in right now. As if right now you're looking at getting a new watch, picking one up that's ultra tough and ultra reliable seems like a good way to go. And to me, that's just the defining characteristics of a G-Shock. So I've narrowed it down to a handful of choices, and I thought I'd present them here to see what all of you think about them, as well as leave this as a starting point for someone else who's thinking the same thing. And again, I'm not an expert on G-Shocks, so if you think I've completely missed a watch, make sure you let me know down below. Now, as for what kind of watch I'm looking for, I have two preferences and two requirements. The first preference is size. I'd prefer it to be more moderate in size, which I know is kind of relative in the world of G-Shocks, but I'd prefer it not to be absolutely gigantic. Or if it is going to be larger, then it also has to be fairly comfortable. My second preference is for something kind of gadgety, for lack of a better term. See, at heart, I'm kind of a gadget guy, and that's one of the things I find really appealing about G-Shocks. So it should have some additional tech that's integrated into it, like sensors or GPS or Bluetooth, you know, that kind of thing. There's no requirements on which specific features, but I figure if I'm going to go digital here, I might as well get some extra tech out of it. Now my first requirement is that it has to be solar powered. Because no matter how tough a watch is, if the battery dies, it's pretty much just a giant paperweight. And the second thing is that it must have some sort of technology to sync the time, whether it's multiband or Bluetooth or even GPS. It has to have at least one of those. So first, let's talk about the G-Shock I like the most, but the one I'm also least likely to buy. And that's the GPRB1000 Rangeman. And this is a watch I've seen quite a few videos on, and most of them by WatchUp69 on his channel. As a gadget guy, I straight up love the idea of this watch as the ultimate outdoor survival watch. Ultra tough and durable, with sensors that give an altimeter, barometer, and thermometer. But more interesting is its built-in GPS navigation, to not only help you get somewhere in the wild, but also get you back. Now, there are other GPS watches out there, but this is one of the few with solar charging, just to keep you going longer. Now, as much as I love the idea of this watch, I am concerned that it's a bit much, both in terms of price and size. And I think that's what really keeps this from being the sensible option, at least for a first G-Shock. So naturally, I'm going to look at the next step down, which is the GW9400, which is the regular Rangeman. There's no GPS here, but it's just as tough with solar and multiband, as well as the triple sensor package as well. So again, just a great outdoor survival type watch. I think it's an older model, but right now on Amazon it's about 190, which is not bad, and about a fourth of the GPRB 1000. Yet it is a bit on the large side, at 53 millimeters wide and 17 millimeters tall. But even with that, I am considering it. It's really just a question of if the sensors and the survivability cred are worth the trade-off for the size and whether it'd be something I'd actually want to wear on an average day just around the house. Which then leads us to the GWB5600, and this is really the watch that I'm leaning towards the most, as it seems the most reasonable in terms of size, price, and features. I believe these came out at the end of 2018, and it keeps to the original all-digital square design. It's about 43 millimeters wide, so it should be a bit easier and much more comfortable to wear. I think this version has all the same features as the all-metal square G-Shocks as well, but at a fraction of the price, as right now on Amazon they range from about $140 to $200. 
It doesn't have any of the sensors, but it's still solar with multiband and Bluetooth. And I think using the G-Shock app to help set some of those features would be really nice to have. Not to mention, I just don't have any digital watches right now, so I could see where having this one might come in handy. The next watch I'm looking at is the GST B200, and it's part of the G-Steel line. And they're also showing that it's part of the new Carbon Core Guard build for extra shock resistance. I'm not sure if that really matters, but hey, it's there. Once again, this is a bit on the bigger side at 49 millimeters wide, but I think as G-Shocks go, that's probably more mid-range. It's also an anti-digi watch, which I don't have any of those either. It also doesn't have any of the ABC sensors, but it's still feature rich with stopwatch, alarm, world time, as well as solar and Bluetooth. Although it's twice as much as the GWB5600, and other than having maybe a better build quality since it's part of the G-Steel line, I don't really think it has any additional features. But regardless of the features, the main reason I've included it here is because out of all the G-Shocks I've looked at, this is the one I like the design the best. And I really like that it actually has a second hand, which a lot of the anti-digis don't. So for me, this is definitely a contender, if not a more expensive one. Next, we have a G-Shock that's not quite out yet, but I think it's going to be released in late April, so it might be one I want to wait for. It's the GBD H1000, and I think they're calling this part of the G-Squad. It's more of a fitness watch, almost like G-Shock's version of a Fitbit. And with the gyms closed for the foreseeable future, this does appeal to me because I've been thinking about getting back into running, and this seems like a great watch to help out with that especially because it's the first G-Shock with a heart rate sensor, and that's something I found useful when running. Like the GPRB1000 Rangeman, it does have a larger display, and sensors up the wazoo, as well as being solar-powered and GPS. But instead of using the GPS for navigation, it's more here to keep track of your run data, as well as it can sync up its clock with that GPS to make sure it's always accurate which I think is particularly cool, as it should work worldwide. So I think it's a particularly cool watch, and I really love the feature set, and I think I would use it just for fitness. But I am a bit intimidated by the large size of 55mm. That really concerns me right there. Not to mention the reported price of around $400. And I think this is high for just a regular G-Shock, but I think it's in line with other runner GPS watches, say from Garmin. Although it's worth pointing out that if someone's looking for just a watch to go running with, you can save a bit of money by going with an older version, like say the Fitbit Iconic, which is about 200 bucks on Amazon right now. Not to mention this new Timex, which just came out and has similar GPS functionality, but it is a bit bare bones. Now I've been focusing on the more technological or gadgety G-Shocks because they're the ones I find most interesting, as these are features you don't really get on a normal watch. Yet the idea has occurred to me that I might be overthinking this, that the whole point of a G-Shock is that it's the ultimate affordable beater, at which point I should ditch the gadgety features and really just focus on that keyword affordable. At which point, I should probably look at a cheaper square, like the GWM5610, which I think still has solar and multiband, or maybe just the really inexpensive DW5600. Or, if I am looking for an anti-digi, there is the AWGM100B, which I think is just under 100 bucks right now. Not to mention, if I still want sensors, there is a twin sensor of Mudman out there for a little bit more. Or I could always jump on the Cassie Oak bandwagon, as they do look pretty good. Now, right now I am leaning towards that GWB5600, as it does seem to be the Goldilocks watch here, in terms of cost, size, and features. But let me know what you think about all of these, or suggest one I might have missed. And who knows, next time I might be wearing it. Now, as always, if you enjoyed the video, you all know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you again.